So uh, uh, it's a really a great opportunity for all of us uh, to uh, listen and to observe Professor Hector. Uh, so uh, before I introduce uh, Professor Hector, uh, I, I, I uh, have to give just a small uh, brief about to the Chikara University publication because we people are celebrating uh, the uh, peer review week and uh, this time, right. Okay, let me share my screen. Uh, uh, Surinder sir, can you give me the opportunity to, to share my screen? Okay, let's... Uh, Let me open the presentation and uh, uh, so uh, this is a peer review week uh, of 2021 and uh, the theme uh, of this uh, peer review week is the identity in peer review. So identity means uh, that uh, individual identity that may be personal, that may be cultural, that may be age, gender base, and geographical. So there are so many things uh, that include into the identity. So how basically uh, identity play the role into the peer review process that was the purpose to identify that uh, points of uh, this event, which is basically was celebrated. Uh, in the whole world. So Chitkara University publication actually an open access initiative of the Chitkara University. And uh, here, uh, I, I basically involved in many uh, other activities also. So we had started our peer review week with a panel discussion with uh, many distinguished panelists. And uh, then after uh, today uh, is our second talk uh, in afternoon. We had discussed with Professor Gregory Talk uh, from the Western New uh, University, uh, Australia. And uh, we actually, uh, Chitkara University Publications, uh, uh, are publishing nine Diamond Open Access Journals. So Diamond means that we don't take any article processing charges and we provide the a creative common license to each and every article that publishes, right? What is it means actually uh, CC by license when the article published with the CC by license, it means that article is free uh, without any restrictions. One can use the information, one can use the, if other is interested to use any figure, any content, so that he or she can basically use that content without any restrictions, without any permission, provided he or she has to pro, uh, give the credit to the original source. So that is the only point. We follow the uh, single blind peer review process. And as I had mentioned that uh, we provide all the copyrights to the other. And uh, as you know that some people uh, submit their article into the archives that is known as preprint archives. So we also accept that uh, submission. All the journals are plan is compliant and uh, most of the people uh, you are aware about, I think, aware about to the plan S that is the, uh, uh, in, that basically include 10 points. And uh, the, in these 10 points, one of the important point is that the fundy basically, uh, those who are taking funds from the uh, some European country, those who have signed this moment uh, plan S. So they, they have to publish their article in open access journal irrespective to the impact factor and H index or uh, any other parameter uh, of the journal. Uh, we are the member of the committee on publication ethics and uh, member of ProStep. Article preser uh, preservation, or we are uh, giving from the beginning, and uh, we are available on the pub loan. So, if you review our article or publish article into the Chitkara University publications, so you can update your uh, pub loan profile. 
right on pablons our journals are available and uh, i uh, we had connected our all article with the plum x what is the plum x actually if suppose you have to find out the social and scientific contribution of the author then it this this information basically uh, include into this particular tool uh, uh, this is the tool of elsevier and uh, uh, altmetrix is of the web of science and uh, at the end uh, we have different manuscript policy that you can uh, find out at the sepa romeo website so these are some features uh, that i want to include and uh, just to inform all all these things uh, uh, about to the chitkara university publications and here uh, you can see that we had started our uh, publication house in 2013 and uh, started uh, doi number in 2000, uh, 2014 year uh, 2019 uh, uh, we were member of the cop and uh, in 2020 actually uh, we had fulfilled the criteria of the plan as yes. in 2021 right now we are the member of is and uh, you can find out us at the united nation sdg publisher compact so we we are trying to uh, actually provide our service to the scientific community in various ways and uh, recently actually i had uh, collaborated with the ameli and ameli is the uh, project uh, basically uh, with the unesco so they are providing us a technology technology in terms that uh, right now we are publishing our article only in pdf format but uh, now after one month or two we we will provide all the various uh, format of the article whether that is html xml or epub or mobi version so uh, this type of uh, exercise we are doing and hope uh, in 2020 our plan is to submit uh, our journal again into the scope so uh, these are the some points and usually i discuss many more thing but right this is the time now to introduce uh, professor hector and uh, professor hector uh, is uh, give me the opportunity to uh, say something about to the Uh, Professor Hector Rene Vega Carrillo. If something uh, I miss in my pronunciation, please ignore that point. But uh, uh, let's uh, start right now and uh, 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 about to the Professor Hector. He is uh, an electrical engineer from the Autonomous University of Jakarta. Obtained a Master of Science degree with a specialty in nuclear engineering. at the autonomous university of new leon in mexico and the degree of philosophy or doctor at the university of texas at austin in the usa uh, he is visiting professor at uh, in several universities uh, at uh, spain valladolid uh, uh, lid salamanca uh, cordoba and the polytechnic of madrid uh, peru uh, uh the uh, peru pontifica uh university uh catolica del peru uh this thing is actually uh, written in spanish so a uh, professor actor uh, please ignore me uh, if i uh, do some mistake into the pronunciation so uh, uh professor hector actually had been visited uh, different countries and uh, in mexico center for research and advanced technology of the national polytechnic institute the autonomous university of nayarit the, the university of gunachioto and the national institute for nuclear research in mexico invited by the international atomic energy agency to participate in the technical meetings of modern neutron detection has developed its own technology for neutron dosimetry and spectrometry spectrometry so uh, all, all participants those who are from uh, the india side and uh, uh, belongs to the uh, nuclear radiation detection or uh, the uh, similar field so the, this this uh, presentation will be very beneficial to them and uh, but uh, uh, we had planned that this uh, presentation remain so attractive for all the all the participant especially young researchers uh, uh, professor hector has developed uh, mathematical methods for unfolding of neutron spectra 
endosimetry based on artificial neural network he was uh, distinguished by the american nuclear society at a n sigma member alpha nu sigma for his uh, contribution to the development of nuclear science and technology lesion officer between mexico and the nuclear energy agency he is reviewer of several institutional publications such as the journal health physics nuclear technology radiation measurements nuclear instruments and methods in physics research a and b applied radiation and isotope radiation physics and chemistry register mexicana de physica annals of nuclear energy among other he is guest editor of elsevier applied radiation and isotope journal member of the editorial committee of e and radiation physics and engineering journal said published more than 200 papers and uh, more than 2900 citation and 42 books as three pending patents and nine copyright certificate so this was uh, a very little about to the professor hector and uh, one thing i want to include here about to him that he is very popular among the uh, research scholars now uh, whenever i see his photographs uh, with the colleagues and uh, their students and uh, when they basically do the experiment field uh, at field so that that uh, basically attract the attention of a researcher basically how he, he is involved with the uh, young researchers and with, uh, that thing basically uh, motivators okay okay right uh, now uh, does i am audible properly or not uh, surrender sir uh okay uh, he, is yes sir okay thank you thank you so much uh so if something uh, had missed uh, because of the bandwidth of the internet so i am sorry for that but now this is uh, right now i am uh, i hand over to the uh, uh, professor hector and uh, professor hector please over to you how are you thank you for the invitation professor suhil thank you so much my pleasure I am happy to see a very uh, dear friends in the audience is a professor Hisan Barsigram we, we have a, a long history when we were young okay in in, in Budapest okay. and also I see the professor uh, professor Mann uh, I don't meet, I don't know him personally but uh, we have uh, some collaboration I'm looking for uh, professor Singh I don't see in the audience see i am i'm seeing some of my students also and um, i'm happy to be with you thank you sir. so I, i would like to to make a very small presentation uh, about uh, how why is important uh, uh, to publish papers and uh, what are the threats that uh, the john scientists have in the in 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 the in, in nowadays in in the next future yeah. if you allow me yeah i can yeah, do yeah. my presentation yes sir sure please say well uh, i uh, title this presentation is the scientific publication in uh, uh, in the uh, framework of the peer review week uh, 2021 and i i would like to cover these topics and talk about uh, what was the first journal and what was the motivation of published papers at the beginning what is the impact of uh, publishing papers in the scientific career when someone decide to make his project of life to dedicate to science and a little bit about the types of publications and a little bit about type of papers uh, of or, or articles when well, as you know uh, we call it uh, a scientific uh, journal let me move a little bit this one here Uh, is published periodically, could be once a week, could be once a month, 
or could be even one a year or two, two issues for, per year. And what is the purpose? All the advances in science, technology, and uh, human life improvement, improvement are reported there in, in the scientific uh, journals. And there are uh, journals which are very spe specialized, for instance, those dedicated to physics, to mathematics, even, even in mathematics to algebra or uh, numbers theory. There are very, very specific journals. And there are also those that publish paper in, in several disciplines. But the first uh, notice that we know is in the 17th century, in 17th century, the first journal was published. The name of that journal was Le Journal des Cabans, that roughly could be Journal of the Learned. Of the Learned. This was the first uh, scientific journal, was published in France in January of 1665. The editor was Denis de Salo, and the purpose, when you see the purpose of this, uh, uh, that motivates to this group of, of colleagues, it was to present experiments that can be used to explain natural phenomena. Here I'm, I'm showing you the, the, uh, the cover of the first uh, the journal, and there are some uh, uh, drawings here of the people related with the publication of this journal. Then in March 6th, in 1665, was published this journal, Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society, which is active today. Still, is, uh, this journal is, is, is in, in, in publication in our days. The first editor was Henry Oldenburg. I don't know if you are familiar with this, uh, this person. He was the first secretary of the Royal Society. He, he was in charge of uh, receive all this in scientific correspondence from England and Europe. This is the, uh, the first editor. And uh, this has the, the, the first cover of this, uh, uh, this journal. And, and you can see uh, in that times, the, uh, the drawings now are like a part of artistic. They were very artistic. And you can see they begin to name volume one. Then in Italy in 1669, that was published this, uh, this journal, Il Giornale de Literati, in, uh, was published in Rome. And you can see in um, Roman numbers, uh, the year of the publication. And in Germany was published the Acta Doritorium in 1689 in, Le in Leipzig, Germany. Was, uh, the founder was uh, Otto Menke, but this publication was uh, uh, taking place due to the initiative of Leibniz. He suggests the publication of this journal and I, I, I show you here the first uh, guy in charge of this journal and the classical picture of Leibniz. Well, as you know, in July 5th, uh, 5th in 1689, Newton published this um, uh, precious uh, scientific uh, uh, book, the Philosophical Naturalis Principia Mathematica, which, we, which was the, the uh, stone in which is based the classical physics. Uh, and what was the merit of, of this, uh, this, uh, this publication? That the, he integrates all the physics uh, in his time and put the basis to put all the physics or that was uh, uh, researched individually or in, in, in blocks, uh, he put in a single piece of a theoretical piece. Well, he, uh, Newton did a, a lot of contribution, not only in physics, he has to, um, uh, to create the new language. Uh, he wants to create math new mathematics to understand the natural phenomenon. This, I I'm showing you here uh, the cover, you can see it in, in internet of the Philosophical Transaction, which is the only journal that's, that is active uh, uh, nowadays. It just for, uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, to show you uh, that you can make a, a click in any of these uh, years and you can see what was published in that years. 
It's a very interesting exercise. If you go there and see um, in the month that you born, 100 years ago, what, what was the publication? This is a very interesting exercise, just for uh, your, uh, your pleasure. And you can see here, they, they, they put here volume one, and in, in this uh, uh, way, they, they see that they only published the volume one was one number. The pages was from page what, two to 16. And, and, and you can see this type of nomenclature is still active today in the, in the, in the journals. You can see here in, in May 30, 60, 65, what was it, who was the authors? What, what uh, was the titles of the papers? And you can see here uh, some names that you may maybe are familiar with them. Mr. Hook, they don't see Dr. Hook or Robert Hook. They only put the, the, the family name. Robert Boyle, for instance, here. And I, I, I increase this to see more clearly. And you, and you can see the, the titles what kind of titles they, they, they were publishing in, in that time. But here's a, a very interesting because it's a, a, a one of the a, a, a very important scientists in the history of physics, Robert Boyle. And you can see the style, the, how they, they, they write the paper. It's like a, a personal letter. It uh, doesn't have the format that we are familiar in, in, in actually. And I, I put here because in, a, in the same number, in the same uh, volume, William Herschel published the papers here. I don't know, you know, what was the uh, scientific uh, work of uh, William Herschel, but all, uh, maybe all, all of you are familiar with Volta, Alexander Volta. And you can see, uh, when the first journal uh, appears, all science in Europe uh, try to publish there. But what was the motivation of them? Become popular? Gain money? Gain fine, fame? No, they, they, they were not motivated by that. Well, in time, the Royal Society of London incorporated the peer review when the, the papers were submitted for publication, the editor uh, considered uh, that was very important to take into account the opinion of that particular paper from colleagues, uh, colleagues that, that have similar, uh, similar interests. And the number of published papers became part of the prestige of, uh, of the researchers. In the uh, 17th century, 92% of the cases about simultaneous discovery ended in dispute, 92%. In the first half of the 20th century, no, not, not too long ago, the number of disputes dropped to 33%. What was the reason of that? The declining conflicts was attributed to the growing acceptance of the publication. The paper, the, the article becomes a very important piece of evidence when you have a dispute with, with, a, with, with a colleague. Uh, initially, all the communication between researchers was very informal, was uh, through personal letters. And in, in, in that, that time, maybe the, the people who is, uh, the young people in, in nowadays, Maybe they don't know what is a letter, how was, uh, how you write in the past letters and you go to the postal office and put a stamp and send the letter and wait some time to, for the answer. Those who has more than 30 years, you, you recall that you send your paper in an envelope and you send two or three copies. And sometimes your paper was lost in the mail or you never <laughs> receive any answer because you don't know what happened with your paper. Oi, uh, today, <laughs> by fortune, in a click of your computer, you can send your paper to the journal and in, 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 almost instantaneously, the editor has your paper in his mail and you have a very fast response. 
that put some pressure in the young scientists. Because uh, in the past, if you publish a paper one per year, you are happy. But nowadays, uh, young scientists are pressured to publish no one paper per year. They want to publish one paper per month because uh, the speed of, of communication uh, has increased with time. What was what, what is the, the objective of, of the scientific journal? To spread the knowledge and put them under public, public scrutiny. You become, you are open to the audience or your colleagues, but you are open to any person who uh, uh, take the, uh, the time to take a look of your paper. How, is it, how important is the, uh, in your career? And in the past, in the in, in United States, the, the, the importance of a publishing paper has more than 100 years. In, in the beginning, in the United, in US, uh, uh, to become professor, the first condition was to publish. Then they put some pressure and say, publish or perish. If you are professor in a, one university, if you do not publish, they kick out from the university. Doesn't matter if you, are a, you were a, a good or bad professor, popular with students or not. The university put pressure into, uh, into publish. Then they, they say publish in high impact in a new language arrives. Impact factor, uh, 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 if your journal is uh, uh, in, in some index, in some database, and there are some new nomenclatures that are put, put in some pressure and some new reality to the people who wants to dedicate to science. And nowadays, this is the new in US, published frequently in high impact journals, and maybe you won't perish. This is the, I like this, uh, uh, this cartoon because it reflects the, the path of, the, of a scientist in, in universities. When you are very young, you are very uh, idealist, and you say, I'm going to do the research I want to do the, for the pleasure of doing research. But the structure in universities, uh, and not at all, but mostly in the, in the Western uh, uh, countries, um, and then when you become a grad student, I'm going to do research, whatever my professor wants. Then you want to become professor, you graduate. I'm going to do research, whatever my tenure committee wants. Then be, because when you are in this picture, I'm in this situation now, you can see my, my face. I'm going to do research, whatever my grand committee want, like wants. And after that, you are maybe retired. I'm going to do research, whatever. I'm, research in peace. It's not rest in peace, it's research in peace. It may be the next life you do, uh, you will return to become a very idealistic young, young scientist. But in the process of publication, there are another pressures that uh, you, we need to, to teach to students to handle. We need to, to, uh, to prepare to, to the young uh, scientists, uh, but not uh, the, in the in informal way. We need to, to take some time uh, with our students to prepare. What is, uh, uh, what is the, the process of publication? For instance, you can see in this picture, the, we, we want to be in the, in the goal, paper accepted. We are very happy when we receive the email now. Uh, congratulations, your paper has been accepted. But in the path of <laughs> to read your goal, there are many obstacles. Of course, uh, Peer reviews is, is not so bad as looking in this picture. But what happens when your paper uh, is accepted partially, but you need to do major comments or major reviews? Sometimes you need to, we need to uh, teach the students how to handle that situation, even how to handle the rejection of your paper. And uh, we think that uh, we give that by, by granted in our students, but it's not so easy. We need to 
sit uh, with the student and explain this is the process and that these are the po possible outlooks of, of your process of publication. We, we need to dedicate some time. Do we need to pass that information to them? I'm, I'm putting here the, the, the cover of the uh, Nacho. It's the cover of this, this week. And uh, as, you, as you might know, Nature and Science are the, the, one of the two top uh, journals to, for, uh, for publication. Um, I'm, I'm working to do some research about uh, how many Nobel Prizes publish their papers in these two journals. And you will surprise that there are a lot of Nobel Prizes that uh, they publish the paper even in nature or even in science. But also it's surprising that some of the recent uh, Nobel Prizes in the areas of physics, for instance, they didn't publish it in Science of Nature. They published it in another journals. What are the features of the scientific uh, journals? Uh, all the papers must be reviewed. And the uh, a formal journal has an editorial policy where uh, are defined several things like the objective of the journal, what type of articles you can publish there, the modalities for publication, how do you, you can access to the files? Uh, they put some rules about if you uh, make your, yourself an uh, archive, if you can publish uh, your papers in social networks, networks like ResearchGates, Academia, Personal Web, et, et cetera. Or uh, if you can uh, uh, make your, uh, uh, your paper available in the, rep in the institutional repositories. Now, in several universities, it's mandatory that when you publish a paper, you must to give a, a, a PDF copy and the university put this information public, uh, in, uh, open to public. And these are breaking the rules with the editorial. So uh, we need also teach the students the, uh, that you must to be very careful to do that because your, the, the editorials have their own rules and the universities have sometimes rules that violate the editorial, uh, the, uh, the editorial politics. Uh, as you know, because I'm see some of the previous uh, uh, colleagues that make a presentation in, in, in this event, they talk about the journal impact. If, if the journal is, uh, uh, in the database of Web of Science is available uh, in the Scopus or even in, in the Google Scholar. And what are the types of publication? You can send a letter to editor. For instance, if I consider a, a novel topic or a topic in research that um, uh, must to be attended, I can send a letter to Professor Susil as editor in a journal uh, suggesting that this this area, this topic, is a uh, need to uh, need to, uh, more attention, and uh, uh, there are journals that that receive letter for editor. For instance, Nature and Science, you can publish their letters to the editor. Now, uh, other things, I can send a general letter, a general letter for the audience and the journal, where I describe shortly about the recent findings in a particular topic. Also, you can publish reviews. Normally, uh, there are two, two different ways uh, of reviews. There are journals that receive reviews. For instance, I can prepare a, a review and I take my time and review in a particular topic what has been done in the last five years. And I need to read 200, 300 papers make a synthesis of, of, the, of that 200, 300 papers and send a review. But that, there are some journals that receive the review by invitation. For instance, one editor detects one area and he uh, makes some investigation and see what, who are the experts in the world. And he makes the invitation to two, three, two or three uh, uh, colleagues uh, to um, publish a review in a particular topic. The other is the normal articles, the normal papers, where you uh, describe it, 
in, in, in your paper, the description about the results obtained in a, a your original research. In, in, here is coming the, the key word, your research must be original. What is the scientific publication is the last step of the research process. If, uh, if, you, if you don't publish, your research, your research, research has no value. Is uh, research never ha has been done. So it's very important to uh, make the effort to, uh, to, uh, to publish the paper. Uh, and uh, if you don't do that, you never did any research. And th that's what I want to, to share with you, Professor Susil. Now I open to, to any discussion. I, we can hear you. Your mic is up close. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Hector. And now we are open uh, for the target audience. Uh, uh, audience can ask uh, any question to the Professor Hector. And uh, if they have any question, it will be uh, our pleasure to uh, uh, share the, uh, the answer of that. Uh, if you uh, uh, you can uh, type your question into the chat box if you have any question or you just uh, raise the hand uh, we will give the access right so if you don't have any question so let uh, let me uh, give me the opportunity to discuss uh, with the uh, with the professor uh, uh, yeah uh, professor hector actually you you discuss uh, many more things from the uh, actually, uh, I, uh, many more things I have seen first time about to the history, historical development of the publication, and it is uh, oh, very nice uh, to see all these things. And uh, uh, now my question is to you that uh, uh, basically when uh, I see you, uh, uh, you people uh, collect the data from the fields, from the mountain, from the caves, and uh, from the uh, historical buildings. I, I have seen a number of the photographs uh, on the social media. Uh, from that, I can conclude that uh, you people are working very hard into the sunlight, into the summer, and <laughs> your team also. So when you collect the data, then after you uh, analyze that data, you frame the research article. So I want to hear about uh, your experience, how basically uh, you, 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 you plan about the research article, about your findings, uh, so, so that a young researcher uh, basically uh, get, the, get the insight about uh, your practices. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, uh, let, let me put it in, in this context. Uh, normally, when you are a professor, one of your uh, roles is to uh, give some orientation, advice, uh, students. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, one undergraduate or graduate student came to you asking for a, a thesis topic, a mm -hmm. thesis topic. And there are two types of professors there. One is that professor that uh, tell to the student, I'm, I'm working in this area, mm -hmm. and there are the areas of opportunity for you. And there are another type of professor. I'm in the second group. Mm -hmm. Then when one student came to me mm -hmm. and asked me for a, to a thesis topic, I asked him, what, what do you would like to do? And they, they, they seems a little bit disorientated by my question. And I say, I'm, I'm happy to have another pair of hands, another brain in you, another pair, a pair of legs. But what do you would like to work? What, what topic is, is your passion? What, like to, what do you would like to do? And uh, it seems a, a little bit hard to, to them to make, uh, give me an answer, a, a, a direct answer. 
it is, it's normal. They, they want to do research, but they don't know exactly what they, they are going to do. Then uh, I put this in, the, in this context, I say, let me make a deal with you. If, uh, I, if you agree with me that you are going to do as your thesis, um, the topic that I, I, I give it to you, uh, make a deal with me. When you, uh, got, uh, what, when you are going to get mar married, I'm going to select to you your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are very, very young, young students here. And when they say, okay, give me the topic and I agree, you, you tell me eventually in the future who is going to be my boyfriend or my girlfriend. And there is a, a very old person here who, uh, that works here in the, in the building. And I, I call him and say, about, uh, uh, from this time in ahead, he is going to be your boyfriend. And, and, and they look, uh, that is too old to me. You made a deal with me. It's the same thing. When you decide, when you propose to me, that when you accept to me that I'm going to give you the topic, it's the same. Uh, you ask me if, that I, I get to you, your boyfriend and your girlfriend. Eventually you can divorce from that person. But from your research, you never can be divorced. Mm -hmm. So it's better that you decide what is the pleasure to you. So the first purpose is decide what topic you would like to work. Something, something that gives you some such great pleasure to, to work in that if you dedicate two hours, three hours, 20 hours, it, it doesn't uh, give you pain. That's that's the, my first deal. Of course, th this this part is, is longer uh, for the student because they need to think. They need he need to read. Of, of course, I give you the the, the 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 tools to 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 him to look for this particular topic. But when the student finds his uh, his uh, gold stone, I can see that how they grow very fast and how they evolve like the real scientist. Then when they collect all the data, I say, well, we, we do some uh, meetings every Friday, for instance, and I, I ask to them, they can give me some reports. Tell me, what do you, what do you read this, this month? What papers do you read? What do you learn in that papers? And you can see how I, uh, they discover uh, step by step the, uh, the topic. And when, you, when the student is in that path, is, uh, you can stop him. It's impossible to stop him because it's a passion. You, you uh, uh, put in them uh, the, the passion for research. They find the pleasure to dedicate to do research. And uh, this is the key of, of the success uh, the, uh, for my student. Of course, we also do uh, social things. Uh, when we are going to make some measurements, to take some samples, and, and all my students are invited. All my students are invited. So sometimes it, it's a particular uh, work for one student, but all are invited, all collaborate. So in, 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 during the, the transportation, during the stay, doing that work, you can see how they communicate what I'm doing. So the level, the cultural level, I'll increase uh, step by step. So when we are, uh, we have all, all the data, then I give you the key. Uh, I, I teach them uh, how is the anatomic or the anatomy of the scientific, or scientific paper. For instance, what is the purpose of the introduction in a paper? How is constructed? Uh, even I, I told him, please count the letters that are in the abstract. How many words are there? And how is the structure? And, 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 and then the student try to, by imitation, try to do the same thing. And in, in the first exercise, it takes some time, but in the second paper, you can see the third paper, I don't participate at all. I don't review the paper. They are responsible to send the paper to deal with the review because they learn it. So that, that has been uh, the work uh, that I, I, I do with my students. We create a method, we call it the GLAPI method, G-L-A-P, 
H I G L A yeah, Glappy, yeah. That that method uh, when I, be, I I returned from US for my PhD, uh, several professors, several young professors were sent to overseas to different universities to get our PhD. And I have uh, colleagues, uh, even colleagues in the same program than me, uh, that I see, they, they, I saw that they are very successful PhD students there. They work very hard. Uh, the professors were happy with them. But something happened when we came back to university, some professors lose, uh, they lost the passion. And I, I, I comment that, uh, that situation with another colleagues. What's going on? Why the, from, let's say, 50 professors that returned uh, return from, from his the PhD to the university, why these 50 professors, they, they were very successful as PhD students in different universities all over the world. Why, when they return back here, they don't publish anymore? What, what is going on? We make that question. Even we, we have very uh, silly ideas. What's going on? So I make some uh, inquiries. I went with this professor uh, to informal talks. I try to, uh, to understand what is going on. And I find that uh, those professors that became very successful in the past and nowadays, they have the second kind of professor or advisor that I, I just mentioned to you. They went to the professor and asked, and ask, I need a, a, a thesis stem, a thesis topic. And that professor tell what is the passion for you. Those professors who, uh, who received the advice of the first kind of professor I just described to you, they was the professor who never uh, shine again. So the, I, I find a pattern there. And I try to incorporate that, uh, that situation to the method. Then the, sec the, se the second step, uh, step was, what is the, the, the challenge? For instance, for, for us that we speak Spanish and sometimes the English is, is hard to learn. Uh, I try to say, well, what is the, pro the problem here? And the problem is how they read the papers. So I, I teach them that the, a scientific paper, you never read the scientific paper from the beginning to the end. This is not going to the movies. This is not to read a, a, a book. This, this is a paper. So the paper has several parts. So we, I understand that what is the purpose of each part. So I, I teach them to begin to read the, the, the paper from the, from the reference. You, you can ask, what are you going to learn from the reference? So what is one exercise? You are going to read this week. This paper is new. OK, begin to read it but by the end. But I need to teach them what is the purpose to read the end. In reading the reference in a paper is to look for leaders. Who are the leaders in your topic in the science? So they, they learn there how to look for the leaders in the area or they are interested to research. Now, when you check who are the leaders, please look for that particular professor in the homepage of the university he works. See how, uh, how they make his career, how, uh, what, uh, how many other publications he has. And he, he, uh, they find uh, sometimes two or three persons, and I say to them, please send an email to him and present yourself and tell, I'm interested, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm in the pre-graduate or post-graduate degree, etc., et and ask to him to share some papers with you. Uh, and I say, they, they will be very happy to receive your mail. I'm very sure that he will receive because I'm very happy when somebody write to me asking for something. And that, that, that's the way, that's the way they, uh, we teach to the students. So, that, that process uh, took us uh, like a 15 years to refine this method, this clappy method, to teach uh, how to take any student, any person, it doesn't matter if he's, he's a 
PhD with 20 years of experience or is a, a pre-graduate, undergraduate student, doesn't matter. The method works. The method works and, and we call it GLAPI uh, to that method. So as I understood uh, from your, uh, all the uh, detailed information uh, and uh, your uh, guidance to the uh, research scholars. Uh, first question is that uh, you are connected uh, with the scholar uh, more scientifically and then emotionally. emotionally. So there are two things and uh, I think uh, the, the uh, point basically which you are teaching to them to make uh, them a perfect uh, uh, person for, for the effort. And you are also bringing out the passion also, which I am observing. And uh, the, because of this region, the bond between you and your scholar has so much uh, strengthful, strengthened. Right? right. Uh, uh, and uh, I am actually very much impressed uh, to observe your points uh, for your research scholar and uh, obviously you are motivating to them, you are giving actual actual uh, mentorship to them to, to involve uh, in a research area. Sir, uh, Professor Hector, actually uh, someone is uh, raising the hand, uh, Professor Alfredo Reyes. And there are some more questions here. So, Professor Alfredo, would you like to oh. say something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I'm, I'm not yet a, a professor, so <laughs> thanks for it. <laughs> but um, I don't know if he, if uh, Professor Hector remembers me, but um, I used to be a student with him. Uh, well, one of my questions is regarding this. I'm doing my master's now and I'm doing my thesis. And one thing I noticed about the, the peer review like community or I don't know, the papers is that the, well, it will be a little bit silly to say it, but the language is really hard. And if the purpose is to spread, like I, I know that the reason of it is to, because it's, it's a more technical uh, paper and stuff like that, but if the reason is to expand the knowledge and well and and that findings to be like review for other peers and the, the people the normal people can expand their knowledge then why the, the language is hard we should focus more to i know that some terminology needs to be hard but we should not be like everything do it that hard so the people will not not lose the the focus or the or the pay the passion because some people read the paper the wrong way but they read it and they don't understand anything at all so they don't know how to interpret anything and they know they don't know how to select a research topic because they don't even know where to start because they don't have that knowledge yet to be understandful of that that stuff so that's pretty much my question is is there a way to i don't know a dictionary or something to understand better for the beginners or is there a method to the to the to the madness so to speak yes thank you alfredo uh, yes there is a method uh, yes of course i recall you very well alfredo uh, the method is the method. The method is a clappy met the method. I don't know if you you were in the time when we offer that course every summer. Uh, it was a free course, and we have a very large audiences. But uh, the method has been refined with the time. Let let me explain. The method was uh, created by three or four colleagues. At the beginning, we just pass the information to the students. For instance, let me put in, in this in context. If I want to teach you how to make a lemon cake and I give you the recipe and you take the recipe, but uh, uh, I, I'm not sure 
if you are able to understand the recipe. For instance, if I say, you need to get some flour and, and you maybe need to, uh, the information, how many grams, how many kilograms would I need? What kind of flour, white or, 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 the, or darker? Mm -hmm. And I, I give I granted that if I give you the recipe, you are able to follow the recipe. And that make uh, this method in the, at, the, at the beginning that fails. It was not enough to give you the recipe. So we change it. Now, when we give this method, um, we do it like a workshop. I give you the first uh, recommendation of recipe and I make sure that you are following the, uh, the details. When you finish, when all the group understand, the, the, the last person understand the tail of the, the, the recommendation, we jump to the next. Uh, I don't know if someone had uh, the microphone on mute. <laughs> Congrats, <laughs> have your mic open. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I understand. I pass by the same uh, uh, road like you. The same. Sometimes the frustration uh, it is it, it, that uh, situation of you is not because your professor are evil. It's because they <laughs> they teach the same way like you. They say, okay, there are a bunch of papers here, and they say read it or study those papers. Like they don't they don't teach you how to study the paper. They don't teach you that the paper has a structure, that each paper that part uh, each paper each part of the paper has a, a purpose and is a design inside. So you need to to you need to be teach uh, uh, that uh, when you are consumer of information, you you see the paper in one way, but eventually you become a producer of information. And you retake that that that, that uh, learn, uh, learn of, of how is the structure of the paper when you write your paper, have the have the same point has the same function. The other thing in Spanish we tend to we tend to to describe uh, things uh, using several words several sentences. In the in, in English in the technical English, the sentences are very short very direct. And you need to be, uh, you need to learn how to do that. And, and sometimes, sometimes you don't need to to know this uh, the meaning of each word. You only need to know what is the what try to the author to tell me in this sentence. Input in your uh, in your uh, own words. Uh, the, uh, that's uh, that is a scientific fact. How you will uh, say that uh, scientific fact uh, fact using your own words but, but it is it is a it's a process that i'm i'm sure that we we, we will have more succeed in universities and, and and the students when we understand that and we pass through that information to the students i don't know if i ask your question alfredo yeah 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 that's that's a great answer <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Alfredo. Thank you, Alfredo. And uh, Professor Hector, second question coming from the chat box, uh, that is from uh, Professor Ivan Castro. And uh -huh. uh, writing a great presentation, Professor Vega, what would you recommend to a young researcher to gain visibility in the area? Uh, okay. Yeah, I what I, I, I will try to you to read the, the, the chat. Uh, yes, so. from the chat box. Ivan Castro. Ivan. I don't see him, Ivan. Ivan, okay, the great presentation. What would you recommend to a young researcher to gain visibility? Oh, visibility. <laughs> this is the new the new uh, language for youngest, that the new yeah. pressure. Uh, the only way to you become vi uh, visible is not because you are handsome, like me, for instance, <laughs> uh, uh, if, because you are strong or tall or whatever. 
the, the uh, uh, one scientist become popular by his public, his or her publications. The, the, the only way you need to publish, uh, even if you publish few or a large number of papers, it depends on several conditions, uh, but uh, you gain visibility when you publish a paper that uh, uh, is original, that, uh, that uh, fills the gaps in the actual knowledge. You need to, to, to look in your area what are the parts of this area that are uh, few treated? And maybe I'm going to dedicate some time to do that. You need to be also very careful because if it's, uh, there are some areas that uh, no, no, uh, there are not too many scientists working on, could be because are very hard to, to work, it, uh, to work uh, in that area and it will take you too much time. But the only way to gain visibility is uh, uh, two ways. One is to participate in scientific uh, Congress meetings. Uh, uh, public, is if it's possible, choose those uh, scientific meetings that publish the works in, in extenso when the proceedings has the full paper. And the other is publish articles, publish papers. It is the only way to gain uh, uh, visibility. Uh, Professor Hector, can I add something more into this yes, uh, traditional approach? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, at present time, uh, these are the traditional approaches uh, by which actually uh, uh, one researcher can uh, show their visibility through the conferences, through the interaction or uh, in networking. But today, at uh, this uh, in the this internet uh, age. Actually, uh, we have to optimize our research article according to the search engines. And this is a neat thing for the traditional researchers uh, that basically matters in terms of the uh, keywords of the research article that we are writing. So I'm not sure that Ivan is a uh, question is related to the visibility in terms of the uh, uh, reputation of the researcher or visibility of the research article to the target audience. So I am giving the answer in uh, if whatever I'm uh, understanding. Uh, and I'm understanding the question uh, from this point of view that uh, Dr. Ivan is interested to uh, that his or her article basically appear into the search whenever the researcher uh, try to find out any keyword. So for that, uh, I will suggest, and every good publisher basically mentioned this trick into the instructions to the other. They say that you have to optimize your article. How you can optimize your research article for the search engine so your article becomes searchable and the probability to search out, find out your article has increased. Uh, some tips is that first of all, you find out the effective keywords. Effective keywords means that uh, related to your uh, research domain, right? So how you can find out, you just simply Google the keyword. If something related to the scholarly article comes, whether that is from the Google Scholar site or from the publisher website sites. So you have to check it, write the, keyword, write the keywords which you are using into the Google search box. When you will search it, when you will Google it, let's see the result, what comes out. Uh, some, Google, uh, some Wikipedia information, some general website, the YouTube video or blogging type. If this thing is coming that it means that keyword is not relevant to your research field. But if some scholarly article opens, right, whether they are coming from the Google Scholar site or they are coming from the uh, publisher's website, then that is the keywords. So you have to use that particular keyword, right? So by uh, most of the time, what we traditional uh, researcher do, we use the keywords according to the model right, that we, our seniors, our other uh, people are using. So we randomly select the keyword, uh, but now it is, it is very important that uh, we have to select the keywords very carefully and especially 
keywords is the phrases form not a single keyword is effective right now we have to use keyword in the phrases form at least a combination of the two or three words what is happening actually when you use single keyword that that time the it basically approach randomly it can go anywhere it can go at the wikipedia it can go the content that i had created on the youtube or on the blog or a general website but when you are writing keyword in a phrases form then it you you are defining your uh, search in a precise way so you have to first thing you have to use keywords in the phrases form and now the next point when you define it very clearly that the keyword which you are using is uh, related to the scholarly articles and some journals are using it then uh, it's it's fine now how to use keywords into the research article to optimize that content for the different search engines write the keywords into the title right which you think that is most most searchable then after use that keyword frequency at least 3 times into the abstract then after you write this statement when you write the intro introduction first of all you have to use that keywords into the first sentence still were connected or just professor kumar frozen hello i am audible or no sir hello yes I'm... sir you are audible okay right so uh, i i was giving the response to the ivan uh, dr ivan castro so uh, by this way you can optimize the uh, research article and in addition to this when you write the caption of the image then that time also you have to use this approach when you are writing the table uh, caption uh, write down that uh, in terms of the keyword so these are some tricks by which uh, actually you can optimize your research article for the uh, okay, uh, for the search engines right and this approach basically uh, uh, bloggers use and uh, uh, this is the uh, this is called search engine optimization and this is totally a new approach and uh, you can find out uh, this uh, this instruction in the in the uh, in the publisher uh, publisher's website where they mention uh, authors instruction they they clearly mention uh, the how to optimize the research article or if you require you just type uh, the how to optimize the research article you will get all this information and every good publisher basically provide this information this is the time of internet our content basically uh, is available on the publisher website and they give us a one page into the website and that page basically rank according to the keywords if you are using effective keywords then it enhance the probability to uh, find out your article uh, to the uh, target audience so in addition to the uh, professor hector's response the, the this thing uh, actually i want to add for uh, each and every researchers so you have to learn how to optimize the research article at the present time also Professor Hector. Uh, Professor Hector, you're muted. Uh, Dr. Ivan, are you there? Okay, no problem. So, uh, so this was the answer of the question of uh, uh, Ivan Castro, and now Ivan. we are moving uh, to the next question that is asked by the Ivan. Professor Preeti. Uh, john and uh, question is uh, professor hector uh, uh, she had mentioned here uh, she uh, praise of your presentation very interesting presentation thank you very much professor hector a question to you professor hector you mentioned different type of articles uh, letter to the editor letters a review article and general article uh, that means uh, uh, right so 
you mention different types of article if a person write a letter to editor is that also be counted among publications this is the question professor hector and question is uh, into the chat box sir over to you uh, professor hector a uh, question is over to you and uh, this is available into the chat box from the professor prithi ma'am still we are acting okay uh, the, 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 there is another uh, uh, i'm i'm reading the chat he say they are uh, from preti yeah yeah she say that uh, you mentioned different types of article if a person write a letter to editors is this uh, is that also be counted among publications uh, it depends of you of of the uh, of the content of your letter. Uh, in some institutions, they will be valid that like a, like a, a, like a paper, but in some institutions like mine, uh, sending letters for, to the editor, doesn't matter where is the journal, it is not valid. For us, it's not valid. I, I hope, uh, Preti, that your, your question is answered. Yes. Uh, yes. And you mean it's so vary from institution to institutions. And when impact factor comes, actually then that time also, they don't consider the letters to the editor for the calculation of the impact factor. Right. Because it's very hard that someone make a, a, is a, make a site of your letter. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's the way. It is another question. Or Mamta yeah. Argarwal. Yeah. Some editors reject the manuscript without peer review, although it's very good work and later got published in higher higher impact journal. Why such practices? How can editors send a paper with a peer review? Or, uh, let me try to give you a, 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 some explanation of that. Uh, normally, uh, you you become uh, attracted to some bunch of uh, journals. For instance, uh, there are more than maybe uh, nowadays there are roughly seventy thousand scientific journals. Maybe so seventy thousand uh, scientific journals. If you divide the, the knowledge in in seven uh, seven areas. You are in your area, 10,000 journals that are published all over the world. But you, um, uh, it's, it's, it's normal that you are attracted to a, a to few of these journals, five, six, or 10 of them. Then when you are trying to publish a paper, maybe you uh, pretend to publish in this small group, but you need to read very careful what is the purpose of the journal if your paper fits in that particular one. When you send a paper, the editor receive your paper and he reads your letter. And you must to describe in your letter for the editor, what, uh, what are you including? Why, why is important that your paper be considered for that particular journal? And sometimes we don't take care of that. So we send the paper, the editor see the manuscript, and you didn't describe, he take a look at your paper and he noticed that your paper doesn't fit. Uh, it's not ideal for, the, for the, his journal and he rejected. That, that's the, the particular reason that he, he didn't reject it because he's uh, evil. It is because maybe your paper, the content of your paper, it doesn't fit very well in the, in the type of papers of, of that particular journal. I hope that uh, that answered your question. I don't know if you want to add something, Professor Kumar. Uh, there is one more question. It's fine. Uh, Dr. Mamta Agrawal, uh, are you there? Yes. You got the response. Uh, your micro is yes, off. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, but sometimes, you know, uh, same uh, journals, uh, I mean, it has happened many times when uh, uh, there are some bigger names, some eminent scientists are, 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 are co-authors. Then the similar paper goes well in that same journal. And, you know, some known colleges, very unknown authors, then the papers are getting very often rejected, although the work is very good. As a senior professor, I'm, I can say this because I'm collaborating various, with various groups. So uh, uh, these kind of you know, biases, I don't know if it is biases because the paper fits very well because similar work has been published by other authors also. So the topic fits very well. But uh, the only problem is uh, without a peer review, uh, it's not fair to uh, reject a paper. Yeah, it's part. Remember that editors also could make mistakes. I don't think this is a, a, some any anything have to do with a, a, something personal. Is maybe that particular paper that you see, you you say, oh, my paper looks similar to this. And maybe that particular paper that was first published. Uh, uh, pass through, uh, uh, and the editor notice. Oh, we publish this paper, but it's not part of the important of my uh, my objectives. And when you yours arrive, well, as you mentioned there, make you a favor because you you publish in a very uh, a, a most, most important journal. But it's it's not nothing. It's nothing personal. I mean, I have seen a, a, all over the years that scientists. We can be evil. We can be, <laughs> we can be some bad, uh, bad behavior, but we have some uh, ethics. It's, in, it's something in our DNA that uh, we respect to the colleague. Doesn't matter if my colleague doesn't like me, or I don't like him or her. Este, but we don't act like uh, in, in an evil way. Uh, uh, that, 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 that's my experience. That, that is my experience. Even there are some, some for instance, uh, there are some uh, uh, processes during the publication that, as, as I say at the beginning, uh, we need to teach to students to handle this kind of situation. I'm sure that when you receive the rejection, was uh, create you a, a, a discomfort, uh, and maybe you uh, even make you that uh, rethink: I'm good in this or not. Because my, my paper was rejected, and I, I, I thought that my paper was very good, and that creates some discomfort. And that happens. That, that sometimes you will receive that kind of, uh, of uh, effect when you receive the, the review of, of the peers. There are some reviewers that are very generous, very generous. Even they orient you very carefully. Even they say, this sentence, uh, you must to write it in that way. You put a, a, a dot here, you separate here. But there are another colleagues, there are other peers that are very, not too generous. Let's just say the, uh, the paper needs a, a, a large review and also the need, it needs to be written by a, a, a person whose natural language is English. And that's all. And you need to, to understand that it's nothing personal, it's just uh, a, a, a colleague that is generous and a colleague that is not so generous with, with the peers. But we need to hand, uh, to hand, to teach, uh, to learn how to handle that type of, uh, of rejection or that, that type of answers. It's, it's part of the process. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Oh. <clears throat> I'm happy that uh, the Professor Mann, please suggest some research tools, <clears throat> research tools. Uh, to speed up the publication process. Ah, okay, to speed up, okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw the, the second part of the, to speed up, to speed up the publication <laughs> process. Uh, 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 my, 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 to, do, to do that, uh, 
let, let, let me tell you that the best recommendation I can give you is just uh, write your paper. Once you, you write your paper before you send it, give your paper to two or three colleagues or two or three of your students and ask them, we, we tell them that the blood runs, que la sangre corra, the blood. When you cut, the, the blood runs uh, all over. And I see, this is a, 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 a red ink pen. This is my paper, please make, me, make my paper bleed. And I, I ask them to be very critical, very critical. And when you receive the feedback, and you will notice that your paper was not perfect. And you made your paper, rephrase your paper, you, you reveal your paper, and now you, you send it. And I'm very sure that you will have a, it's going to be shorter, the process of reviewing. That, that's my advice. Yeah. Professor Kulvinder Ma, sir, are you there? I hope, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, there's another more question. Uh, no more questions, sir. No more questions, okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, something new. Thank you, Alberto. Luis Alberto. Luis Alberto. Yeah, but I'm feeling very, uh, very, very nice. Uh, actually, uh, it's uh, really uh, my first of all. I will say that it's uh, really my pleasure uh, to listen you to you observe your experiences and uh, all those things. Basically, which I was uh, observing from the social media. Now I have observed personally and. Uh, uh, I feel really very uh, great uh, to talk with you, to listen to you and uh, your approaches uh, to the uh, scientific activities. And uh, still, if uh, anyone asks uh, any question, uh, we are open and uh, Professor Hector is available. I have taken just for, uh, permission only for one hour, but uh, this is more than one hour. So, uh, Professor uh, Hector, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time and uh, your uh, nice uh, uh, approach to explain the uh, scientific things in a, a well manner. And uh, uh, the way, basically, the, I am very much impressed the way you 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 train your students. And uh, it, it's my desire actually. You you, you just uh, offer me uh, your student. I want to learn something more, uh, something more like these things, because I am uh, I had to observe uh, right now uh, many things uh, that uh, you inculcate uh, into the uh, scholar's mind. And obviously, sometimes uh, I I am interested to talk. Uh, uh, this is my open. Uh, actually, I am not hiding uh, to anyone. But uh, I am interested to talk uh, once uh, one day uh, with your scholar also. And uh, if uh, you will give me the, that opportunity, it will be great for me. Uh, I, wa I want to observe one more thing from that. Here uh, in this session, I had observed, I had learned, and 100% uh, I'm sure that uh, the target audience will be beneficial uh, from your observation, from your experiences also. So from my heart, I am really very thankful to you and for your time and uh, this uh, uh, accepting this, uh, this short uh, time invitation. And uh, so much thankful, really. So I don't know uh, because uh, how, how I can express the uh, rest of the things, but uh, it is really my pleasure uh, to, be, uh, to listen more things uh, about to you. And uh, you, you, you give me the permission to talk uh, with your scholars once uh, and one day, along with you. No, no, not only those, but along with you, I would like to interact uh, with the, those students, how basically they think, uh, how they implement the things. So I can show or I can share that information uh, with the Indian young scholars. So, so, so they also basically motivate, they also, 
uh, uh, try to do uh, in the good practices in their research careers. And uh, you told me uh, two things that uh, type of the uh, mentor, type of the supervisor, and you are of the second type, uh, really. Uh, really. So, so the, the, the type of uh, actually practices are really very good. And uh, this is actually things comes from the inner, inner side. And whatever is a pattern, basically uh, you, you, you had shown and uh, you, you basically really leave that things. Uh, uh, I, I am so much uh, thankful to you, uh, you for your uh, guidance, uh, for your explanation and time. So thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, I will wait for your response for the next meeting. And uh, I will try to uh, make awake you the whole night because uh, that time will be of the uh, daytime. I, I, I will plan uh, this event uh, in a daytime. So other colleagues, other friends, uh, those who could not attend this uh, uh, session, so they also get benefited with your experiences and uh, practices. Thank you, okay, sir. Thank you. thank you to you, Professor. It has been a, a real pleasure and an honor to to accept your invitation. Just look us in, in the screen. We are separated in space and time, but we share the same passion to do science, to look for knowledge. We are also separated by the language and we are using the international language of science, which is English for fortune, for uh, some part of the mankind, and for unfortunate for those who over that over native language is not English, but we do, we do the effort. Has been a real pleasure to to see you all of you uh, uh, to this uh, uh, media, and of course I, I will take your your, your suggestion to make a, to uh, to invite you in one of our uh, Friday uh, session with my students. We'll, I will try to organize that, uh, the session that you are not too late or you are not too early because we have uh, several hours of difference. And it has been a, a pleasure to, uh, I appreciate the questions that everybody and, and your congratulations and your comments. I, I really appreciate and I, I learn every day from your questions, make me to me, uh, make to me to, to question myself because sometimes, uh, the best question is that that you, that you never did for, for you. And I, I, I here receive a very nice backup. And, and also I'm happy to see all, all colleagues and all friends that we collaborate in, even though we don't, we don't meet personally. And I, I'm, I'm, anytime you, you wish professors, Kumar, uh, I'm at your disposal. Thank you. Thank you to you. It was an honor to be. It's uh, my own, our honor, sir. And uh, thank you once again for uh, your time. And uh, early in the morning, I basically taken uh, the uh, first uh, uh, one and a half hours. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, so. Thank you, sir. And uh, thanks to all the participants uh, to uh, be here and to listen to Professor Hector and his experiences, practices. And uh, thank you once again to all of you. I will try to uh, give you uh, a certificate of this session uh, for your academic benefit. Uh, so that will I provide into the next week. Uh, right. So this is the point and uh, now our uh, all week has been over and uh, with this presentation and uh, I, I hope that uh, all of you have enjoyed uh, the, the, this type of event. If you have any question, you can uh, write an email to the professor or to me. Uh, we will try to help and resolve those things. So thank you so much, sir. And thank you all the participants. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Yeah, now you can.
Yeah, I will leave at the end, but uh, if uh, anyone, those who are, uh, 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 they, they, they can leave. Yes, I will record the meeting and uh, I will share it, sir. Uh, Kulvinder, sir, I will share the all, all the all the uh, all the recordings that uh, we had record that I will share with you all uh, very soon. Thank you, thank you, Alfredo. Uh, uh, thank you, Kulvinder, sir. Uh, Kulvinder, sir. Guillermo, Professor Dr. Guillermo, thank you, thank you so much. My pleasure. Dr. Isan, uh, thank you. Yeah, now we can leave. Thank you, Divya. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rajneesh. I hope this uh, uh, session you had enjoyed and related to your field, but uh, I could not, uh, we could not uh, actually uh, talk much more about it. Uh, thank you, Joel. Joel, uh, please ignore my pronunciation, Joel. Watch quiz. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Chandran. Thank you so much. And I will try to keep in touch through your emails. And anytime you, uh, those who are listening right now, uh, you can write the questions, uh, some questions that uh, you uh, keep in your mind. So I, I ask those questions to the uh, panelist and to make the things more clear for other scholars also in those who are in the early careers of the research. Uh, you will get your uh, certificate, e-certificate soon, uh, most probably in the next week. For all the events though, in which you had participated, So uh, now I am leaving and uh, I hope uh, uh, that uh, uh, we will meet uh, soon into any uh, other activity. Uh, you uh, or uh, I had planned some more uh, event on the 7th October that I will disclose uh, nearby to the 5th and 6th. And uh, he, that talk basically is very, very, going to be very much effective. Uh, okay, okay, Professor Hector D. Leon, thank you, thank you so much uh, for your time and uh, your presence. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, you. You can leave. Uh, actually, I will leave at the end. So, um, because of that, I'm waiting for you. Uh, when you can leave, then after I can leave. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Diego, Medina, thank you. Sahila, thank you. Simran, thank you. Sagupta, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. And now I am leaving. Uh, 
I hope uh, you people have enjoyed the uh, enjoyed this uh, presentation, and uh, I will try to organize something more to make uh, it more fruitful. So thank you, thank you, thank you.